Please be seated. It is my pleasure to welcome you to East Tennessee State University for our commencement ceremony. We are gathered this afternoon to celebrate both an ending and a beginning, the culmination of years of work by the students who sit before us and the promise for a better future because of their achievements. This ceremony also celebrates the efforts of family members and friends, as well as university faculty and staff who have been a part of the lives of the students before us. I welcome all of you for this important occasion as we confer these degrees that are symbolic of academic and personal achievement. It is now my pleasure to introduce the president of East Tennessee State University, Dr. Brian Nolan, who will introduce our commencement speaker. Thank you, Dr. Bach, and good afternoon. Because of the results-driven, common-sense leadership of our commencement speaker, Tennessee is widely recognized as a national leader in education, job creation, and fiscal responsibility. His commitment to education is making a difference in the lives of families across our state. Tennessee is the fastest improving state in the nation in academic achievement. And because of his vision, the Tennessee Promise will give every graduating high school senior the opportunity to earn a certificate or degree beyond high school free of charge. Governor Haslam has focused on making Tennessee the number one location in the southeast for high quality jobs, and Tennessee currently holds the title of State of the Year for Economic Development. Working with the General Assembly, he has balanced the budget every year, kept taxes low, ensured Tennessee has the lowest debt in the nation, and has nearly doubled the state's state savings account. Thanks to his efforts to make state government more customer focused, efficient, and effective, Tennessee is ranked as the, one of the best managed states in the nation. Please join me in welcoming a true friend of higher education and of East Tennessee State University, the governor of the great state of Tennessee, Bill Haslam. Thank you, Dr. Nolan. Welcome to Dr. Nolan, the faculty, staff, uh, parents and families, uh, friends, and most importantly, the soon-to-be graduates. It is really good for me to be back on campus. I was here back earlier in the fall, and I had one of those lessons that you occasionally get as a governor when you might start to think that you're all that and you realize that you're not. Dr. Nolan and I were walking across campus and about every other person said, hey, Dr. Nolan, you gonna play basketball tonight? Or, hey, Dr. Nolan, you gonna come to our discussion group tomorrow? And then finally I heard somebody say, who's the guy walking around with Dr. Nolan? <laughs> it's okay, I'm, I'm kind of used to that. Um, in Nashville, when I moved there, I had the, the realization after a little while that once you're governor, you just can't go down to the local Y and work out or wherever you're used to working out before because when you do and you're on the treadmill or you're on some exercise machine, people think, ah, finally a chance to, to, to talk to the governor and tell him my opinion or get my question answered. They, they won't give me an appointment, but I can catch him because he can't go anywhere. He's stuck on the treadmill. 
And so I'd be there breathing as hard as I could, trying to, to get one more mile in, and somebody would be talking with me, and finally I figured out this isn't gonna work, I'm gonna need to go somewhere else, and one of the local universities said, you can use our student uh, exercise facility, which was great, and so I started working out there, and remembered again why that worked so well, is because college students, most of them, don't know or care who their governor is. I was working out in, uh, one more early Saturday morning, and because it was early Saturday morning, there were no students there. And, uh, and somebody, one of the students walked in and said, uh, he's talking on his cell phone, he said, uh, no man, there's nobody here, it's just me and this one really old dude, so come on down, it's all ours. So, as the really old dude who was assigned to speak to you today, I promise uh, not to be long. But I want you to know why I'm here today. The first thing is that as the governor of Tennessee, we have six and a half million people. East Tennessee State University is incredibly important to this state. If you look at this entire part of the state, I think ETSU is one of the principal players, if not the principal player in this entire part of the state. So it matters what happens here. It also matters that you're graduating. It is a really big deal. Let me tell you why. In Tennessee, of all the jobs that will exist 10 years from now, 55% of them will require a degree of some type. Unfortunately, in Tennessee right now, only 32% of our population has a degree. And so you are joining the numbers of those folks who are going to help us meet the job demands of the future. It is a really big deal that you're here because it sends a message. I know what a big deal it is because my father was the very first person in our entire family to go to college. He got a scholarship, was able to go to college, nobody else had been, none of his siblings were able to go. But because he went, all of his children went, all of his grandchildren went. He has a son who's a governor now who focuses on higher education, education above all else. And the message is this, if no one in your family ever has gone to college before and you're the first, you literally are setting a pace that can reverberate for generations to come after you. And so because of that, I would love if those of you who are the very first person in your family to ever uh, receive a degree, if you would stand up and let us recognize you right now, that would be terrific. Thank you and congratulations. I hope all of you, whether you're the very first person in your family to ever graduate uh, or you're part of a long line of academicians, that you realize that you're part of a bigger picture of what we're trying to do in the state. We're trying to make this a state where people choose to live and to work and part of that is by increasing the education attainment and what you're doing today and what you've been working on uh, for either several years or, uh, or four or two or however long you've been working on your current degree makes a big difference to us as a state. Well, I am now finishing my fourth year as governor and you learn a few things uh, in the time you're governor. So Dr. Nolan uh, asked me, do you speak at many commencements? And when you're governor, you do get asked to speak at commencements uh, frequently. And so my first year, I started out giving 10 pieces of advice to the new graduates. And then I realized that the graduates didn't really want to hear 10 pieces of advice from me and they certainly wouldn't remember them. As a matter of fact, I'm willing to bet that when you're coming to your child's graduation, however many years this is, years from now that is, someone will say, who spoke at your graduation? And I am confident your answer will be, I don't have a clue. And I know that because I could ask the deans assembled here and I bet 90% of them don't have a clue who spoke at their graduation. Uh, and it doesn't hurt my feelings. So I'm gonna take my 10 and make it three and hope that maybe you'll remember one of those three things. The first piece of, a, of advice I have is this. I know you think you're through class and it's now time where you don't have to listen anymore. You get to go out and do. I hope that is not the lesson you take away from your education. Of all things for the rest of your life, I hope you're a listener. Tennessee this past year lost one of our greatest citizens, Senator Howard Baker. He'd been the majority leader of the United States Senate. He had been the chief of staff to Ronald Reagan. He had been the United States ambassador to, to Japan. Grew up in a small town in East Tennessee. And at his funeral, someone was trying to describe why he had achieved so much from someone, someone that maybe you wouldn't have thought would have done that. And they said, it's because of this. Howard Baker was an eloquent listener. 
That's a great way to have someone describe you, that you're an eloquent listener. There's a quote that I love, it says this, wisdom is the reward you gain from years of listening when you would rather be talking. The wisest people I know spend a lot of time listening and I hope you will be a lifetime listener. Part of being a listener is being a great question asker. I am betting those of you who have done really well, you have learned through the academic process to ask great questions. A friend of mine, uh, that I didn't learn this till my kids were out of the house, but when their kids first started going to school, they didn't ask them, what did you learn today in school? They always asked them, what questions did you ask in school? When I'm hiring someone for a job, to be honest with you, I don't pay nearly as much attention to the answers they give to my questions as I do to the questions that they ask me. So I hope you'll be a great listener and part of being a great listener is being a good question asker. The second thing I hope you'll be is a person of humility and a person of grace. I've decided there's kind of two kinds of people in this world. One walks into a room and says, here I am, and expects the room to immediately uh, turn their attention to them. They're the person that you know. They need to be the bride at every funeral, uh, the bride at every wedding and the corpse at every funeral. The other kind of person walks into a room and says, there you are because they realize that the world doesn't revolve around them. They become a person of humility and probably also because they become a person of grace. I think grace might be the best word there is. Grace means you realize that everyone walks with a limp. Some of those might be physical limps, but all of us, regardless of who we are, what we do, what we have done, we walk with a limp of some type. So I hope that you will be a person of humility and grace. And the last thing, last piece of advice I have is this. Work hard. Work really, really hard. You should be that person that when you leave whatever job you're in for whatever reason, they really miss you. When I became the, before being governor, I was the mayor down in Knoxville. When I became the mayor, there was somebody that worked, there was a guy that worked there in the office and uh, after about a year and a half, he came to me and said, I'm sorry, I just can't take this pace. I'm going to leave. And he left, and about two weeks later, I asked somebody, I said, well, who took Bob's place? And they said, well, nobody. And I said, well, how are we doing? They said, we're doing just fine. Other people have left that I've worked with, and you can't fill the hole because of the work they've done. Please be a person who works really, really hard. You see, I believe this. Life is a relay race. As governor, I didn't just start at a starting line and then I have my four years or eight years as governor. I took the baton from someone that came before me. And just like in a relay race, they handed me that baton in a certain position. You are now, whether you're getting a doctorate degree or your undergraduate degree, you are being handed a baton from folks who have come before you. Parents who have worked really hard to make this moment come true, faculty and staff that have had as a single-minded focus the uh, uh, what's, what's the poster say outside at to graduation begins today? People who have, since the first day you walked here, have thought graduation begins today. If your parents who thought the day you were born, hopefully graduation begins today. I hope now that as you receive the baton from the people who have come before you, you realize that it is game on. Whether you're a brand new graduate or a governor just elected to start a second term, I hope you realize it is game on and you run the race in such a way as to make proud those folks who handed you the baton to begin with. On behalf of the state of Tennessee, congratulations. We are proud of you and we are grateful for you and we look forward to you being a vital part of Tennessee's future. Thank you.
On behalf of the more than 2,300 faculty and staff and almost 15,000 students who comprise the ETSU family, I welcome each of you to our campus and extend special greetings and congratulations to you, the class of 2014. Each of you entered college full of hopes, dreams, and aspirations, yet with some degree of trepidation about the journey that lay before you. Today begins another journey as you move from this place of educational exploration and personal development and transition into the workforce or graduate school. Commencement is a time for renewal and reflection, an opportunity to look back at what has been and to envision the future. It is also a time of great accomplishment and pride. I can see that pride in the faces of the graduates who are before me today on this, one of the most hallowed days of the academic year. But as you journey from here today, I encourage you to take time to acknowledge those individuals who have played a role in establishing both the scope of your dreams and the limitations of your horizons. When you receive your degree, please take time to read the text, paying attention to the phrase, upon the recommendation of the faculty. Your degree is not a collection of credit hours. It is not a mere reflection of random job skills. Your degree is the embodiment of the academic spirit in the covenant between you and the faculty in which the faculty formally declare to you that you've achieved the learning foundations expected of a college graduate. The faculty opened your mind to new ideas and philosophies that will serve you well as a citizen of our social democracy. In the years to come, you will reflect upon lessons learned in the classroom, and you will recognize the important role that the faculty have played in your life. In the end, your duty is to keep the dreams of the faculty burning bright, to continue to learn throughout your lifetime, and to serve as active members of your communities. Graduates, if you would please join me in a round of applause for our faculty. During the holiday season, each of us take time to reflect upon those individuals who've had a profound impact and influence on our life. It's a time when we all look back and say, I'm thankful for this or for that or for this accomplishment. But to every graduate, you should be thankful for the family, for the friends, for the loved ones who sacrificed to make today possible. I spoke with a graduate earlier today who said upon receipt of his doctoral degree, he was going to Disneyland. Many of your parents haven't had a vacation in years because they've made today possible. So please stand and say thank you to your parents, friends, and loved ones who played a large role in your success today. The platform party this afternoon is comprised of valued members of the university community. Deans of the various colleges will be introduced later and will join in greeting the graduates. At this time, I would like to introduce and ask to stand other members of the university administration and distinguished faculty who join us today. They are as follows. Dr. Wilsey Bishop, University Chief Operating Officer and Vice President for Health Affairs. Dr. William R. Duncan, Vice Provost for Research and Sponsored Programs. Dr. B.J. King, Senior Associate Vice President for Finance and Administration. Dr. Joe Sherlin, Vice President for Student Affairs. Dr. Virginia Foley, President of our Faculty Senate. Ms. Cheryl Burnett, our University Registrar. And Dr. Allison Barton, who carried the mace this morning and was the Distinguished Faculty Award recipient in teaching for 2014. At this time, I would also like to recognize several special guests who are seated to the front of my right and ask that they please stand to be recognized. Joining us today are Ms. Taylor Dunn from Newport, Tennessee, an early childhood development major and a communicative disorders minor who was elected secretary treasurer of the ETSU Student Government Association. She carried our alumni banner earlier this afternoon. And my wife and our first lady, Ms. Donna Noland. Dr. Bach. A 
total of 1,387 degrees are being conferred today. Honors graduates are wearing medallions on special colored ribbons as indicated on pages 33 through 35 in the program. Those wearing white ribbons are graduating cum laude with GPAs of 3.5 to 3.64. Those wearing yellow ribbons are graduating magna cum laude with GPAs of 3.65 to 3.84. And those wearing blue ribbons are graduating summa cum laude with grade point averages of 3.85 to 4.0. We're extremely proud of our Reserve Officers Training Corps, ROTC program here at ETSU and of our students' commitment to service and leadership in excellence. Yesterday, we commissioned one senior as a second lieutenant in the United States Army, and this new officer will graduate graduated today. Beyond his, this academic pro, our academic programs of study, this new lieutenant has pursued a very demanding program of leadership development and physical training that has prepared him to now lead our nation's sons and daughters as a military officer. Cor Carter A. Doyle graduated in this morning's ceremony. Mr. President, it is my privilege to report to you that the candidates here assembled have qualified in all respects for degrees by successfully completing curricula offered through the several colleges and schools of East Tennessee State University. They've been recommended to be awarded appropriate degrees in recognition of their academic accomplishments by all the faculties and by the following. Dr. Gordon Anderson, Dean College of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Dennis Depew, Dean of the College of Business and Technology. Dr. Rick Osborne, Dean of the School of Continuing Studies and Academic Outreach. Dr. Angela Lewis, Interim Dean of the Claudius G. Clemmer College of Education. Dr. Judith Schlegel, Interim Dean of the Honors College. Dr. Wendy Nering, Dean of the College of Nursing. Dr. Randy Wyckoff, Dean of the College of Public Health. Dr. Don Samples, Dean of the College of Clinical and Rehabilitative Health Sciences. Dr. Cecilia McIntosh, Dean of the School of Graduate Studies. Dr. Larry Calhoun, Dean of the Bill Gatton College of Pharmacy. Dr. Robert Means, Dean of the James H. Quillen College of Medicine. And Ms. Patricia Van Zant, Dean of the University Libraries. Would candidates for the doctoral degrees please rise for the conferring of degrees? The Doctor of Philosophy graduates will be hooded today by the chairs of their dissertation committees. The Doctor of Audiology and Doctor of Nursing practice graduates were hooded last evening. President Nolan, the candidates now standing and some absent with permission have completed all requirements for these doctoral degrees. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend you confer the appropriate degree. By the authority vested in me by the Tennessee Board of Regents and upon the recommendation of your faculty, I now confer upon each of you the doctorate degree to which you are entitled, with all of the rights, privileges, amenities, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. If you would please come forward as your name is called, Dr. McIntosh would be honored to present you with your diploma.
Candidates for the master's degrees, please rise for the conferring of degrees. President Nolan, the candidates now standing and some absent with permission have completed all requirements for master's degrees in the School of Graduate Studies. On behalf of the graduate faculty of the university, I recommend you confer the appropriate degree. By the authority vested in me by the Tennessee Board of Regents and upon the recommendation of your faculty, I now confer upon each of you the master's degree to which you are entitled with all of the rights, privileges, amenities, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. If you would please come forward as your name is called, Dr. McIntosh would be honored to present you with your diploma. Chelsea Marie Goubet. 
Would candidates for baccalaureate degrees please rise for the conferring of degrees? President Nolan, the candidates now standing and some absent with permission have completed all requirements for baccalaureate degrees. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend you confer the appropriate degrees. By the authority vested in me by the Tennessee Board of Regents and upon the recommendation of your faculty, I now confer upon each of you the baccalaureate degree to which you are entitled with all of the rights, privileges, amenities, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. If you would please come forward as your name is called, the dean of your respective college would be honored to hand you your diploma. Sierra Michelle Atkins. 
David Lee Kraft. <laughs> Christopher Lamb. Sarah Elizabeth Larrabee. <laughs> Kaylin Elizabeth Leroy Bowers.
Lydia 
everyone in the audience would please join me in paying tribute and congratulations to the East Tennessee State University class of 2014. I'd like to thank Dr. Potterton, Dr. Zembauer, Mr. McMorrin, the ETSU Corral, our wind ensemble, and everyone who was involved in making today possible. I'd like to thank Mr. Fred Saussman, Senior Writer and Associate Professor of Appalachian Studies, for so flawlessly announcing each graduate's name. I'd like to thank the interpreters from Disability Services for their invaluable assistance today, as well as the Officer of the Registrar for facilitating this event, and finally to ETSU Online, who provides live streaming for the ceremonies. Graduates, remember how today felt. Remember how you feel at this current moment. And I want to leave you with a challenge. Take that feeling. Take the dream of post-secondary education, the dream of receiving a degree that you realize today, and to pass that on. Talk to a neighbor or a friend who's undecided about their future and tell them how you feel today. Make that your personal goal. And through that small act of encouragement, through, as the governor said, passing on that baton, you can transform a life. In closing, may today be the beginning of a new journey for each of you, the beginning of a great adventure and of a life well lived with purpose. May we always remember today, and may we celebrate those memories for a lifetime. On behalf of everyone who comprises the East Tennessee State University family, I wish you happy holidays. Godspeed to each of you, and go Bucks.